Welcome to Coors Light Fox College Football. The legacy of Heisman Trophy winner Robert Griffin III looms large outside Floyd Casey Stadium in Waco, and his successor to the Baylor quarterback throw, Nick Florence, leads the nation in total offense, averaging nearly 435 yards per game. Tonight, he'll take to the air against the TCU Horned Frogs and sack leader Devontae Fields right now on Fox College Football. Welcome to Floyd Casey Stadium in Waco, Texas for Fox College football. Today, the 4-1 TCU Horned Frogs battle the 3-1 Baylor Bears. And with that, we say hello and welcome. Good evening from Waco, Texas. Mike Morgan with you here. It is a great matchup, one of the more unsung rivalries in the state of Texas that dates back to 1899. Two programs that have had dramatic changes with their respective coaches, both in a positive direction. When you talk about TCU and Gary Patterson, defense comes to mind. Meanwhile, for the Baylor Bears, how about 54 points per game per offense? That's how Art Bryles likes to get it done with a shootout. As I bring in my partner, J.C. Pearson, 54 points. It's a game. Now, last year they had a Heisman Trophy winner at RG3. This year they're doing it with a young man that is making some noise in Nick Florence. Oh, no question about it. Nick Florence is a very good one. How about this? Leads the entire country in total offense. Second in the nation in passing and hasn't thrown for less than 300 yards in any game so far this year. Nick Florence playing as well as anybody in the country. He's going to be tough to stop tonight. Meanwhile, on the other side, TCU has been forced to go young. It'll be just the second career start for the redshirt freshman, Trevon Boykin. But this will be his first start on the road in a hostile environment, so they're going to have to get him settled down and comfortable early in this game. Didn't play badly last week, threw for 270 yards, but for TCU to have any chance to win this game tonight, he's going to have to eliminate those turnovers. Well, Baylor stunned TCU last year in this building, the season opener. No doubt the Horned Frogs will have revenge on their mind. Kickoff is coming up on Fox College Football. Mike Morgan, J.C. Pearson with you in Waco, Texas. Baylor and TCU about to do battle. Let's check in with the third member of our broadcast team with the latest on Casey Paul Hall. Here's Laura McKeeman. Mike, Casey Paul Hall plans to withdraw from school and enroll in an inpatient facility looking for help with a substance abuse problem that's plagued him during his college career. Paul Hall was arrested on suspicions of drunk driving October 4th and suspended indefinitely by Gary Patterson. Patterson and Paul Hall's parents met and decided that the best answer right now is to get him professional help. Patterson says our plan is that he gets himself right and enroll in the spring. He would be able to graduate in two semesters, which is the ultimate goal, and we get a great kid back. The door will remain open for Paul Hall to return to school and the team after his treatment, but Mike and JC, Trevon Boykin is the Horn Frogs quarterback for now. Well, he certainly is. Thank you so much, Laura, for the update. And obviously, it changes the dynamic of this team and what this offense can do, J.C. Yeah, it really does. But the one thing about Trevon Boykin is he brings another dimension, an added dimension in the way that he can run with the football. And all he has to do is just settle down, manage the offense, and not turn the ball over, and they'll be in good shape. TCU won the toss. Deferred. It'll be Baylor football first. Overchrome is the kicker. He is a freshman with a sensational leg. Baylor with a couple of dangerous return men deep. Goodley and Stoneham. It'll be unreturnable as Goodley watches it sail over his head. First and ten from the 25 as we get a look at Nick Florence. RG3, it's almost impossible to replace a guy that rewrote the record books, but Nick Florence has done a heck of a job, number one in total offense. He's like a coach on the field when you talk to him. Yeah, and he's got that confidence, that swagger about him 
and you can do no more than he's done this year. I mean, other than really run the ball more and use his legs more, which he's capable of doing, I mean, you can't ask any more of what this young man has done so far for this Baylor offense. And this Baylor offense has been lethal, averaging over 54 points and over 600 yards a game. To the ground on first down, and a nice job knifing in the TCU defensive line. Just a gain of a yard for Jared Salubi. The Bears will waste no time. They like to get 85 to 90 plays off. Deep downfield, has an open man at the 40. One man to beat. Touchdown, Terrence Williams. 74 yards. How about that on the opening drive? And that's exactly what Art Riles told us their offensive philosophy was, and I loved it. What did he say? Come get some, because we are going to attack from the very first play on. The first play was a run. Second play, let's go down the field over the top. Loved it when he said that. Come get some. 22nd career touchdown reception for the senior Williams. As the extra point by Jones is knocked through. It took all of 26 seconds. Nick Florence, the senior, finding his favorite target, Terrence Williams. Baylor 7, TCU nothing. After a long touchdown reception, but JC, what happens defensively? Well, already some breakdowns. Look at the corner, Jason Barrett inside and the safety. There's a receiver wide open outside. Now they don't know what to do. Barrett's not sure. The safety, Chris Hackett, doesn't know if he's got the middle of the field or the outside third. And now Terrence Williams just runs down the field, and there's nobody there in coverage. A big mental breakdown right off the bat for TCU in the defensive backfield. The BMW scoring drive, two plays, 74 yards, all of 26 seconds off the clock. And you know that Baylor likes to go fast. Tempo, tempo, tempo. That time, that might have already gotten TCU in trouble with the tempo not being able to match up. Boyce and Dawson back to receive. Racing up to it is Dawson. And immediately gets pummeled at the 30-yard line, a 10-yard return. As we take a look at the starting quarterback, for the Horned Frogs, Trevon Boykin. You know, just a week and a half ago, he was working out at tailback with all the injuries there. Now he's the quarterback and likely going to be the quarterback the rest of the year. Yeah, and last week they really had to simplify some things because remember, he only had a day or so to prepare to play quarterback. They were working him out as running back, like you said. So this week they should expand the package a little bit. I saw them running more option plays in pregame than we saw them run last week. Dean dots the eye on play action. Boykin. Incomplete deflected. Looked like Dixon got his hands on it. As we look at the TCU keys to the game. Well, the biggest thing for them is take care of the ball. They had five turnovers last week. Without those turnovers, they win that ball game against Iowa State. And then defensively, obviously, you've got to limit the pass game of Baylor. And we saw in that first drive, two plays, they didn't get that done. the shotgun draw play big hole up the middle and strong running by Matthew Tucker and that's good news in itself because there was still a question mark whether 29 would be able to go he's been battling an ankle injury he's back he's their best running back right now but I tell you I watched him in pregame warm-up and he was still limping that left ankle is still very sore it's easy for him to run straight ahead but the problem comes when he's got to make those cuts especially going left to right off of that left ankle so We'll be keeping an eye on that. TCU's offense has struggled on third down. This is third and three. It's Tucker banging his way to the 40. The ball came out late. They're going to talk it over whether or not he was down before the ball 
squirted out. And they say Baylor football. Gary Mason on the recovery. You see, they had a problem with this last week. See when this ball comes out. No, definitely not. He's definitely down. Ball's going to go back to TCU. I'll tell you what, they got to make sure that they take care of the ball. You see right there, no question about it, an entire left hip and leg definitely on the ground before that ball comes out. I'll tell you, you see Gary Mason right there, number 10, was a defensive end, moving him down inside this week to play defensive tackle. They want to get more quickness, more push in that pass rush. But watch right here. Matthew Tucker definitely down right there. The ball doesn't come down until he actually tries to stretch it out and it hits the ground, so it wouldn't have been a fumble anyway. Matthew Tucker, a senior, a young man with 28 career rushing touchdowns. And they really need him back. No disrespect to Dean or Catalan, but they're not the same team rushing the football without Matthew Tucker. Yeah, they. Matthew Tucker is the bigger guy that they have now, 227 pounds. It gives him some power. And you can see the things he's done throughout his career. That's a lot of production lost when he's out of the game. LaDainian Tomlinson at the top of the list, who was recently inducted into the TCU Hall of Fame. My guess is that was not a very close vote. A lot of tradition at Texas Christian. After further review, the runner was down. It'll be fourth down, ball placed on the 39 and a half yard line. So a rather easy reversal for Tom Walker and his officiating crew. TCU offense back onto the field. And they'll bring the punter out on fourth down in a couple of inches. Ethan Perry. Norwood back to receive for the Bears. High spiraling kick. Number 12. Weaving his way through traffic and goes down at the 22, a 10 yard return. We'll get a second look at that lethal Baylor offense. More Nick Florence, more Terrence Williams when we come back from Waco. check in with Laura. Thanks Mike. TCU running back Matthew Tucker knows how much he means to this team especially when they have a young quarterback in there. They need to get that ground game going so during warm-ups he's testing out that ankle on this turf making sure he can go and rallying his team around him also spending particular time with Catalan his backup Mike. Yeah he's just a freshman. They're already down to their third string tailback and their second string quarterback. Baylor will show no mercy in spite of all that. Out of the shotgun, Florence fires, completes it at the 25. Will stop and go, and finally spun out of bounds is Levi Norwood. 12 yards and a first down, keys to the game for Baylor. For Baylor, they want to play fast. Tempo, tempo, tempo. We saw it work on the second play of the game. Had TCU's defense confused, and then on defense, they just have to pressure the young quarterback, Trevon Boykin, force him into some turnovers. Florence over the middle on first down. Did he scoop it up? That's an interception for Jason Barrett. Oh, he vacuumed that one right off the carpet. Best cover quarter on this TCU team, and a terrific job on the dive. Yeah, that would be his fourth interception of the year watch him go down and get this ball great job right there the receiver never even sees it it's gonna be tough looks like he got his hand under the tip of the ball but i don't know if the back end between the elbows hit the ground that's what they're going to take a look at the ruling on the field is an interception by the defense previous play is under further review 
certainly one you have to look at. And Gary Patterson, you got to get to the line and snap that ball <laughs> so that you don't give them a chance to review it. That's exactly what they're talking about right there. You see, it looks like he has his hands under it there. I don't think the ball ever hit the ground. I think he got his hands under the ball, under the tip of the ball, and then look at his forearms and elbows. I think he cradled the football. I don't think it ever hit the ground. But how about Lanier Sampson, number three? The receiver never made a play on the ball. How do you let the defensive back come around you and make a play on the football? Well, if it stands, it is a terrific pick by Jason Barrett. A junior out of Fairfield, California. I don't think there's going to be enough there to overturn it. He's After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Interception, first down. Fifth career interception for Jason Barrett. Look at those numbers. Easily one of the best corners in the Big 12. Oh, no question about it. I mean, you can see his ball skills there, but he's got great feet, great hips, and great awareness. And we've seen him make a lot of plays in the couple of games that we've had of TCU already this year. Now we'll see if this TCU offense can capitalize with Dean stacked up near the line. Give him a yard. Dean, the former UCLA Bruin, who is teammates in high school with Andy Dalton. This Baylor defense a lot easier to throw against these guys than the run. Three of the top five tacklers in the Big 12 are these three linebackers. Lackey, Hager, and, and Ahmad Dixon. A little swing pass on second and nine. And some good room down the sideline for Catalan. Give him eight yards. And that's what B.J. Catalan, Catalan brings to this offense is speed and quickness. Matthew Tucker's a big, strong guy. Dean is a big, strong guy. But Catalan gives him a change of pace. The only problem he had last week was hanging on to the football. And as a freshman, you just hope that that's a learning experience for him because if he can hold on to the ball, he can definitely make some things happen on the ground for TCU. Fumbled by Boykin, and he just passed a pounce on it to make sure to not give it away a six-yard loss. No excuse for this. Got to get the ball. A little, bit, a little bit of a bad snap to Boykin's left, but he's got to be able to make that play. That's not a far win. Not too far to just take a short step. You're going to your left anyway. They're going to run the option. Should have made that catch and executed the play. Turnovers have been an issue for TCU with 14 coming in. On second and extremely long. Not much doing there. Matthew Tucker picks up a tough yard. And that is all. Wow. Took a big shot though from Chris McAllister. Number 31 comes in from the backside, the defensive end, and he just unloads. Well, now this is the, the nightmare scenario for this TCU offense, which has not been a big strike offense of late. Third down and 15. Look for something across the middle. The middle of the field is going to be open here. Boykin going to tuck it and run. Boykin has wheels, dodges one tackler, and makes it all the way out to the 25-yard line. A 24-yard gallop for the freshman. What a great read by Boykin. Wanted to go down the middle of the field. Nobody there, and just a good, quick decision. Pull the ball down and make something happen with your legs and turns it into a huge gain. And that's something we didn't see last week was the quick decision-making. Today, on that play, no indecision whatsoever. Pull it down and make a big play. Zucker the lone back on first down. They fake it to him. Boykin on the move. And takes a big time wick. He was lit up near the 23 by Eddie Lackey. You could hear that shot from up here, just two yards. 
Tell you what, he had a man gripping Gilbert, the tight end, wide open down the left sideline, and he actually saw him. Boykin did, but the pressure was there so quickly, he couldn't set up and throw the ball. That's a touchdown that they missed. Quarterback keeper again lowers the shoulder and staggers forward for five more. Sam Hall on the stop. That's the option play that I saw him working on in three game so much. That's an added wrinkle from last week, being able to expand the playbook a little bit with the young quarterback. We didn't see very much option out of him last week. We expect to see a lot more today. The red zone has been problematic for TCU. Look at the bottom of that graphic six turnovers inside the red zone third and three looking end zone leaping catch touchdown cam white from 18 yards impressive series by the young quarterback Trevon Boykin on the road, making his first road start in a hostile environment. Very impressive drive. That has got to feel awfully good for Trevon Boykin. Best drive of his young career individually, and a welcome sight for TCU as a unit. Boykin to the sophomore, Cam White, and we're tied at seven. Eight fifty six remaining in the first quarter as we take another look at the touchdown. Yeah, watch Cam White here. Look how much room he has to work to the outside. He stems inside and look at all the room he has to the outside. And so now when the ball is thrown outside the cornerback, number 22, Joe Williams, he's got to turn his back. Look at all the room to the outside. So the corner's got to turn his back to run to get there. And then he runs too flat. You got to continue to go down the field. They just throw the ball, Boykin does, outside and high, and allows Cam White to just go up and make a great catch. The BMW ultimate drive, the 18 yard touchdown, capping it off. And Trevon Boykin, again, not just that pass, the big run on third down, that has to do a world of good for his confidence. Sometimes when you're young and you're inexperienced, you don't know what you don't know. Meaning you don't know that you're supposed to be nervous. You're supposed to be kind of shaky on the road. He's not showing any of that. Goodley takes a knee. Bears will have it from the 25-yard line. 7-7 seven, seven our score, 8.56 remaining in the first quarter. A very good rivalry in the state of Texas. They've been playing for a while, but this is the first time these two teams have met when they're both in the Big 12. And that's kind of a sore subject. A lot of people from TCU thought back in 1996 when the Big 12 started, they thought they should have been in the Big 12. Baylor got the bid. TCU didn't. It bounced around a couple of conferences, and here they are now. And not only that, they, they both have a loss in conference play, trying to find their get their first win in conference play so you add all that on top of it too and it's a big game good hole between the tackles for Salubi Baylor's leading rusher as he gobbles up five you can't get any more even than what these two teams have done over the years this is the 108th beating 50 wins for each squad and of course last season Baylor winning 50 to 48 that's when the nation got to know RG3 as Florence is wrapped down for a loss. Devontae Fields, remember this name, Big 12 fans. You're going to see a lot of 95. They thought that time they were going to get the young freshman on the zone read play, trying to do too much. But Devontae Fields, minding his own business, able to make the play on the outside. Another tackle for loss for Fields. He leads the league. Florence rifles it complete. At the marker, first down, that's Goodley, the sophomore out of Midland, Texas, for seven yards. 
What TCU defensively has got to do is just play over the top, keep everything in front, don't give up any big plays, but they can't get impatient by giving up short runs and, and throws. Salubi for two yards. Hasley on the tackle, the former walk-on. And the key to that, though, Mike, is their front four and their linebackers. They've got to be able to stop the run with seven guys in the box so that they can play coverage over the backside. More running from Baylor again, Salubi. I think a lot of people would be surprised to see just how balanced this Baylor offense is. Last year, they were 50-50 run pass. Yeah, and coming into the game today, 163 rushing attempts, 164 passing attempts. So that shows you right there, they're very balanced, but they want more production out of their running game. Lawrence looking for the side from the sideline on a third down and six. Bears go four wide. Lawrence, he can run. Makes a move, leaps, and he gets to the marker for a first down. Nice job by Nick Florence. Carter on the tackle, but not before Florence scampers for six. Good job by Nick Florence. He's got a 60-yard run so far this year, which is the longest on the team. A race to the line of scrimmage and run it again for Salubi on first down. And you might be saying, well, Baylor's a pass team. Why are they running so much? And that's because there's only seven guys in the box defensively. TCU is playing so much coverage over the top, forcing Baylor to run the ball. But that's what they want to do, and they'll run it and then take their shots when they load the box. Ball play on second down, and nice job of pursuit. Salubi actually losing yardage, and on the stop, that is Elisha Olabu, junior out of Cedar Hill, Texas. TCU doing a great job of playing the run with just those seven guys in the box, and able to play coverage over the top of the receivers down the field, not giving up any big plays. TCU number two in the nation on third down defense. This is third and nine. This is where you got to watch Devontae Fields, number 95. Second in the Big 12 in sacks. Strong throw to the far side, and it's caught. Ten yards to Lanier Simpson. That doesn't sound like much, but look where he throws horizontally. You got it have a strong arm to be able to throw that ball all the way to the out and make and have that ball completed and enough for a first down and how about the receiver going down the field just enough to be able to come back and catch the ball and still have enough for a first down smart play Baylor normally strikes fast this has actually been a Longer drive for the Bears, the 10th play. Reception at the 35. That's Tevin Reese. They call him Sweet Feet, and he's got a good pair of puppies. He can pick them up and put them down. 4-3 in the 40. So what you see now is starting to run some play action, fake the run inside, and throw the ball. Off right tackle on second down. Second effort for Salubi. Move the chains. Five more yards. Salubi on the air, averaging four and a half yards a carry. He's got some big shoes to fill. And he cuts it up the middle here for a couple. I say big shoes to fill. He has to replace Terrence Ganaway, who is a very good running back in the Big 12. And it's his time. And that's what the coaching staff told us is that it's Salubi's time now. He's waited his turn. It's his time. What they want to see from him is to make some more explosive runs. He gets all the yards that he's supposed to get. Now you got to make a guy miss and make it a big game. On second down, look out. Pressure from the backside, and Florence is sacked. 17, the safety, Sam Carter, a loss of seven. They bring some pressure this time. Sam Carter, number 17, see him at the top. Comes around, beats the tackle, Drango. 
You're able to just run down Nick Florence from the back. Sam Carter, kind of that nickel back, that kind of hybrid safety linebacker type of guy that can play in coverage, but he can also attack the line of scrimmage. The Bears are three of three on third down. This is third and 15. Flushed out. Throws into coverage, picked up. Past the 30. This is Hackett. And he's down at the 43 yard line, a 24 yard return. Chris Hackett, the freshman from Tyler, Texas. Bad throw. Nick Florence never want to throw into coverage. On the move, just a bad decision. Great read by Chris Hackett. A rare mistake by number 11. TCU back on offense when we return. TCU 7. Go back to the last play. Nick Florence, just something young quarterbacks are taught never to do. He's rolling to his right, which brings all the defense to him, and then he throws back across his body, and Chris Hackett just comes up, reads the quarterback, and makes the play. But you never want to throw back across your body to the middle of the field because when you roll right, all the defenders are coming right, and you see Nick Florence right there trying to do too much. That's what, quarter, that's what coaches talk about when you hear them say a guy trying to do too much. Right there, that's not a good fundamental play by Nick Florence. Two early picks for Florence. Meanwhile, on first down as a penalty flag falls to the ground. A good run for Catalan, the freshman, as he travels seven yards, but this one might be coming back. Holding, offense, number 15, 10-yard penalty, spot and foul, the key first down. And that's on the wideout, David Bush. Penalties have really been an issue for TCU. Over 75 yards a game, the second most of the Big 12. They've had penalties and turnovers. That's really yeah. been an issue for this squad. Not a good combination. When you have those two things, you shoot yourself in the foot and you make it hard for you to win. They've got 14 turnovers coming into this game. Ten of them are lost fumble. So you combine the two, it makes it awfully tough to have a lot of success. Catalan and Dean back there. And it's Catalan for a yard, but Baylor defensively there. Ahmad Dixon, one of the leaders of this defense, had a concussion last game, but he's okay to play today. Like I was saying earlier, it's, it's much easier to throw on this Baylor defense than run because they've got active linebackers. We just saw Ahmad Dixon there. Hager second in the nation and first in the Big 12 in tackles per game, and we've seen Eddie Lackey make some plays also. Very, very good linebacking core on this Baylor defense. Play action. Look out, Boykin. Sheds one tackler. Can't shed the other. He throws it just in the nick of time. He had Terrence Lloyd, number 11, all over him. Yeah, but the guy that makes the play, though, is Lackey. The pressure early on forces him out of the pocket. And look right here. Boykin's got to understand he got, he got away with one there. You never want to try to throw the ball. You're getting drugged to the ground. Recipe for disaster. Third down conversions. An issue coming in. Two for three so far tonight. A swing pass. Tucker. Lasso down at the 47. Well shy of the marker. Picks up nine. And TCU will punt it away. All things being equal, this is the kind of score and tempo that TCU would certainly like to see. No question about it. You want to try to keep the score down against the Baylor. And they're, they're doing it because defensively, they're playing coverage, not giving up anything over the top other than that early miscue. Now they're playing a lot of zone. 
Levi Norwood has returned every punt this year for the Bears, but he won't be able to return this one as he hits the pylon. Now college football action continues here on Fox Thursday. The Houston Cougars take it on SMU in a Conference USA showdown with in-state bragging rights on the line. Our coverage of college football continues Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern time, 5 p.m. Pacific. See the pylon there, that's that's the end line. The ruling on the field is that the punt hit the pylon, that's out of bounds. Touchback. Wow, but you know what? It looked like from that angle the ball hit the ground before it hit the pylon. So if the ball hits the ground first, then they should rule wherever that ball actually went out of bounds before it hit the pylon. Just because it hit the pylon afterwards doesn't automatically make it a touchback. No oh, Baylor back on the field offensively. Nick Florence, the touchdown pass early, but two pick six. Runs straight up the gut. And a good game for Salubi, six yards. This is showing just good patience by Baylor. Taking what the defense gives them, they're going to try to get their running game going. Penalty flag on the field. It was Salubi again, Hasley on the tackle, the former walk-on. What I mean by that is if they could... Offsides, defense, number 40, lined up in the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty, result of penalty, first down. And what I mean is if they can get their running game going, then that's going to force TCU to have to bring a safety down, and now that's going to open up the Baylor passing game. So Baylor's showing a lot of patience offensively right now, just trying to, to get that running game going and force TCU to come out of coverage. Penalty on McFarland, one of 15 true freshmen to play for the Horn Frogs. Good-looking run here for Salome. Into the clear and shoved out of bounds after first down yardage. Got it to the secondary after 19 yards. And that's exactly what I'm talking about right there. Stay patient with the running game, and then Salubi makes a guy miss. What they talked about with us in the meeting is what he has to start doing is make the unblocked guy miss, and he did that that time and turned it into a big game. Quick pass, almost picked off. Boy, oh boy. That ball was right in the hands of Kevin White as if he was the intended target. Wow, Terrence Williams has got to make this block better. But great job by Kevin White of understanding the play and jumping the play. But Terrence Williams, the receiver number two, he can't allow that to happen. It's just one-on-one -on -one blocking out there. Kevin White, almost a big, huge play for TCU. White got picked on last week by Iowa State. Gave up two touchdowns. Straight ahead running by Glasgow Martin. He's more of a change of pace guy, but bruising tailback at 6'1", 220. Bangs his way for five. And that will be the final play of quarter number one. Entertaining first quarter. And a good one for TCU to hold it to just 14 total points. Baylor fans in full force here at Floyd Casey Stadium. TCU 7, Baylor 7. You're watching Fox College Football. With J.C. Pearson, I'm Mike Morgan here from Waco. Our Coors Light game summary 7-7, our score. Boykin has looked good here in this game so far, just his second start. Big game for Sam Carter on the defensive side. Nick Florence has struggled a bit. Two turnovers already for the senior quarterback. Yeah, only had five interceptions coming into the game. Two already in the first quarter. Baylor is three of four on third down. This is third down and five. Play clock down to five. Florence goes down, another sack 
Sam Carter. A loss of seven on the play. TCU being aggressive defensively. You're going to see 17 coming from the left side of your screen. Does a good job just fighting, battling, and beats the lineman and comes up with another sack. Second, this is his second sack of the first half. They know a thing or two on how to play defense at TCU. That's been this program staple under Gary Patterson. Penalty flag on the punt. Dawson lets it bounce. And we'll clear up the penalty here in just a moment. Just a 26 yard punt. Not sure if he's in a hurry to make the call. Making sure whether or not it's declined. Diego formation on the kicking on the team. Kicking team. Prime. First down. You can hear that wind gusting into our microphones. There was a threat of rain today. Going to be windy. Hadn't stopped the fans from enjoying the action here in Waco. Great rivalry between two Texas schools, TCU and Baylor, tied at seven. Saturday, Aaron Andrews, Eddie George, and Joey Harrington get you ready for kickoff with the Ford Fox College Saturday pregame show. Then it's an exciting doubleheader, beginning with a Pac-12 showdown as 17th-ranked Stanford takes on Cal. That's followed by a Big 12 matchup between 6th-ranked K-State and 5th-ranked West Virginia, led by Geno Smith. Coverage of Fox College football presented by Geico First begins game. next Saturday at 2.30 Eastern. Up day for West Virginia. As the pass is completed, Boykin to Josh Boyce for eight. A little surprised at what Texas Tech was able to do? Absolutely. But they did defensively a lot. What TCU is doing here tonight is playing a lot of coverage, not allowing the big play over the top and forcing, they forced West Virginia to try to drive the ball, just like TCU is forcing Baylor to drive the ball. Dean spins his way for a couple, about a yard shy of the marker. Tucker racing back onto the field for the Horn Frogs. This is where you, you're glad to have the big senior behind him. He gets it, and the second effort should have it. Tucker goes 6 1, 227. Bring in their heavy package. Bring in an extra offensive lineman in place of a tight end. And they just fire off the ball. And then you have a big running back, like you said. Not real hard to get a yard. It's been tough for TCU's running game. Remember, Ed Wesley left for the NFL early. And then Wayman James, he had the season. Ending injury against Kansas earlier in the year. A jet sweep action here. Sky Dawson can fly. And he's out of bounds right near the first down. Give him 10. You're absolutely right. You got to honor Sky Dawson whenever he comes around on that jet sweep because he is so fast. 10.29 in the 100 meter dash. One of the fastest players in the Big 12. You got to honor him anytime he's a threat. On first and ten, a little flare pattern. Ball is on the ground, but it's incomplete. Tucker never was able to grab hold of it. And the ball was thrown forward. That ball is thrown backwards. It's a lateral, and it's a live ball. We welcome everybody who was just watching Oklahoma State and Kansas, Oklahoma State victorious 20 to 14, the final score. Our score here, seven to seven, a low scoring game between Baylor and TCU. Mike Morgan, J.C. Pearson, along with 
Laura McKeeman. Rain is starting here as well. You can see up in the lights. Rain is started here. It's already windy. You add some rain and you wonder how the passing game for both teams will be affected from this point on. But you have to think it, it favors TCU slightly because they've got a mobile quarterback, a guy that can really run the ball with his legs as we've already seen. So it may favor TCU a bit. Boykin rifles complete. Boyce with the completion. I think he's short by about a foot. So decision time for Gary Patterson. Looks like they bring on their heavy package again. You got to like this aggressiveness. And right here, why not? You're at the 38-yard line. You're on the road. You're trying to get your first Big 12 win. You play to win. Boykin feeds Dean. No, he doesn't. He throws instead, and it's incomplete. No, it was in the hands of Matthew Tucker, and he was unable to hold on. And I know hindsight is 20-20, but why do you run that play? It's fourth down in a yard. You bring your tank package on. You got a big, strong running back, and then you try to boot pass, and it's a tough play for your young quarterback to make. The Baylor offense and Nick Florence will go back to work. When we return, 7-7 our score here in the second quarter. Second quarter, a tie ball game, 7-7. Well, it started off like Baylor was going to just light it up the second play of the game. Terrence Williams with a 74-yard touchdown pass. But then the TCU defense started to stiffen up. Jason Barrett comes up with an interception, which leads to a Boykin to Cam White 18-yard touchdown pass. And then again, another big play by this TCU defense. Chris Hackett comes up with another interception to stop a Baylor drive. Now the story coming into this game for Baylor was that man, Nick Florence. A tremendous year he's been having, but he has struggled early on against this stingy and somewhat salty TCU defense. Run on first down, it's Tevin Reese. And they would like to get number 16 involved because he is electric in the open field. He can make a lot of things happen. Very similar to what we talked about, about Sky Dawson. Very fast, quick guys. Lawrence complete. Here's Reese. And let the fun begin as he was tripped up maybe by his own two feet, those sweet feet we were talking about. He picked up 19. Yeah, and a good job coming back to the football, not allowing the defender to come under it. He comes back to the ball and makes the play. First and 10, big hole up the middle. Spinning past the 30 and down to the 29 is Salubi. 12 yards and a first down before Chris Hackett brings it down. And the tempo. They had slowed the tempo down quite a bit, and now they're picking it back up. Another good gaping on the middle of fumble. Looks like by TCU, they've got it. I believe it's Barrett. Make that hack it. So, Luby, they've been featuring him this entire first half. And that ball just comes out. No question that that ball comes out. Devontae Fields, number 95, with his left hand. Watches Devontae Fields with that left hand just rake that ball out of there. Recovered by Chris Hackett, and that's the first lost fumble all year long is by Baylor. Three turnovers in the first half by Baylor. Bullfrogs trying to capitalize, firing through up the middle as the freshman Catalan for eight. <laughs> Baylor coming into this game averaging over 54 points a game. They've been scoring 45 plus a game. 
for nine consecutive weeks. Catalan squeezes out a yard. It'll be third and short. It's third down. Dean, good second effort as he bounces off a tackler and falls forward for a couple. Well, this is exactly the kind of game that Gary Patterson and TCU wanted. Grind it out, get first downs, keep the clock moving, because when you do that, you keep that Baylor offense off the field and on the sideline. Now what they've got to do is, is finish off some of these drives, get some points out of them. Boykin on the money. He has been accurate in this first half. And his favorite target has been 82, Josh Boyce. He's definitely thrown the ball very well. And he threw the ball well last week. He just had a couple of times where he eyed down receivers and threw interceptions. But today doing a much better job of not doing that. A quick snap as Dean. Picks up about a yard. It'll be third down and short as you see the average time of possession. Well, TCU leads the lead. Baylor is last, but of course Baylor is last only because when they score, it's typically in quick fashion. Not tonight. Got to give TCU's defense a lot of credit so far in this ball game of not allowing the big play other than the second play of the game. Since then, they've settled down and played much, much better. Third down at about a foot, and why not go back to Josh Boyce, who's got a reception in 25 consecutive games and is the all-time receiving touchdown leader in TCU history. And, and it's just an easy, quick throw out there. K.J. Morton, the cornerback, is playing too far off and inside, so all Josh Boyce does is run down the field, turn around, and it's an easy timing route and an easy throw for Boykin to make. See again, inside, off, and inside. Play action. Up and go. Who does he throws? Has a man. Incomplete. Winston B, who just checked into the game, one of those true freshmen, had his man beat by a couple of steps. They sure did. He had him beaten on both sides. Josh Boyce down at the bottom, wide open on the double move. Just a little bit of pressure. See, just the ball actually still catchable. He just misplayed it. He just misplayed it up there. You, you get Listenby in there who hasn't played a whole lot, and he just turns around, mis, mistimes the ball. That would have been a huge play for this TCU offense. Second and ten. Looked like some confusion. Boykin running for his life and is brought down behind the line by Bryce Hager. Seven-yard loss, Hager, whose father played for the University of Texas. And those are the plays that TCU can't have offensively. You miss a big play down the field, a possible touchdown, and now it puts you in second and ten. And then now you have another huge loss on second down, and now it gives you third and 18. Those are the situations that you don't want to put this young quarterback in. Boykin unloads it to Boyce. Boyce with some nifty running makes it to the 35. He needed the 33, so just a couple of yards shy. And you would think that they'd go for it here on fourth down, but how about Boykin? He stands in the pocket, pressure coming right in his face, and he took a big shot, but he still delivered that ball to Boyce. This young man is playing a tremendous first half throwing the football. Well, they've got a kicker in Overthrown that has a very strong leg. You're on the road. Went for it once on fourth down on a pass. But you're against the wind here. Look at the flags on the goalpost against the wind. Tough kick. Pass is caught at the 30. First down. 
Ladarius Brown, a very highly touted freshman. Wow, when you're throwing the ball like Boykin is right now, he's throwing fastballs out there. Watch up at the top, Ladarius Brown, just a big body, but look how quickly that ball gets on him. Joe Williams, the corner, has no chance to react to that and make a play because Boykin is getting that ball out of his hands so quickly and with a lot of velocity. Impressive drive for TCU. This is the 11th play. Boykin a run. Boykin falls down on his back. He's taking some shots tonight, picks up two hard-earned yards. Boykin again, just making quick decisions. This is not a quarterback draw. He wanted to throw it outside, but the coverage was tight, so just makes a quick decision and just gains positive yards. And two positive yards for this offense is good, as opposed to taking a chance and throwing the ball outside and turning it over. TCU fans making the short trip here to Waco. Jet sweep again. Sky Dawson trying to turn the corner. Gobbles up four. Dixon and Hager, the two linebackers, chase him down. Again, here on third down, watch outside. Quarterbacks have been giving up too much cushion outside and making it easy. Now they've tightened up on one side, but still a lot of room down at the bottom for a quick throw. Third and four, pass is caught. And that should be enough for a first down. Brandon Carter first grab of the night, one of the top targets on this TCU offense. And just what I was talking about, too much cushion, and it's just an easy quick throw for Boykin. There's no chance at all for the rush to get there and it's you're not disrupting the timing of the route so it's an easy throw and a catch and they convert another third down this impressive drive at tcu is on the horn frogs three of four on third down boykin settles in looking in zone incomplete intended for david porter See Williams, number 22, some contact there, but the reason there's no flag is Williams is playing the football as well. He's got a right as a defensive back to play the ball in the air, and they'll let you have some incidental contact in that instance. See the man in motion, that's Josh Boyce. 18 career receiving touchdowns. Boykin ropes the left side, picks up three. McAllister on the stop for Baylor. Well, this first half has been a blur. We're already nearing the three-minute mark. Like you said, this is exactly the way TCU wants it. Offensively, they're, they're loving this. Able to just grind it out, continue to get first down, convert on third down, and keep the clock moving. Now there's under three minutes left in the half. Play number 16 of the drive. Bears dial up the blitz. Boykin fires. Caught. Stumbling. And into the end zone. Touchdown for Cam White. Second score, 15 yards. Again, another quick throw, a slant against man coverage, and this time Cam White with that big body, 6'3", 200 pounds, just too big. Overchrome knocks it through. Horn Frogs up by seven with 2.45 to play in half number one. When we return, we'll take you to our Fox College football studio for a halftime preview with Kevin Frazier and Marcus Allen.
Kevin Marcus, appreciate it. Looking forward to that ball game tonight. Pretty exciting one here. TCU trying to pull off another victory in Waco for the second consecutive year. Cam White, TCU's coaching staff, told us how deep that receiving core is. Cam White, at best, the third, fourth option. He's played big tonight. Stoneham on the return. Thirteen-yard return. Baylor football when we return. So far, it's been the Boykin to Cam White show. Not just once, but twice. And the Horn Frogs up by seven. Watch Cam White here at the bottom of the screen. The cornerback, Joe Williams, is inside, reads the play, but Cam White at 6'3", 200 pounds, just too big for him to get around and knock the ball down, and then makes one other move on K.J. Morton and takes it into the end zone. Baylor down by seven, back to the air game. Antoine Goodley. Well, we talked about all the exploits of this Baylor offense coming in. This is what Gary Patterson has been able to do. They have led the nation in total defense five out of the last 12 years, including three straight years, 2008 through 2010. You give him time to scheme you, game plan you, and he can do a lot of good things with a very talented, albeit young, defense. Maponga was the man down on the field, one of their top defensive linemen. Preseason all Big 12, all first team last year when they were in the Mountain West. The young man who was born in Zimbabwe, lived there till he was eight years old. Rugby and soccer player. I wouldn't want to have to go up against him in rugby. And he's a guy that's really made it easier for Devontae Fields on the other side because he commands so much attention. You got to double team him. Florence. Buying time and throws it incomplete. I'll tell you what, J.C., when you look at that TCU secondary, what are they doing right now that's so effective? Well, they're bringing a lot of pressure. Number 17, Sam Carter, is the guy that is coming. Already two sacks in this first half, but they're bringing him all over the place. They'll bring him inside. They bring him from the outside. They even lined him up as a defensive tackle, and he was able to beat the guard and make a sack early in the first half. So he's a guy that's being disruptive right now to this Baylor offense. Second down, Florence in trouble, sacked. Kenny Kane, the lone senior on the defense, and a loss of six on the play. Again here, they just beat the offensive line. Look at the pressure up the field, forces Florence to step up in the pocket and then Kenny Kane reads it and just steps in and cleans it up but this defensive line and they're only rushing with four guys is winning the battle at the line of scrimmage and that's TCU's defensive line I'm talking about on third and 15 four man rush and that won't do it Completed to Lanier, Sampson, Kevin White there to meet him. Tell you what, the, a coverage's best friend is pressure. And if you can pressure with four guys and drop seven in zone coverage, it makes it so tough on a quarterback. And the way that th this front four is getting there, Nick Florence doesn't have time to set his feet and go through his progression reads anyway. So now there are purple helmets everywhere that Nick Florence is looking. Sky Dawson camps under it. And a fair catch at the 26 as we check in with Laura. Mike, we've seen Trevon Boykin have a successful first half for TCU, and he's in there because Casey Pawhall was suspended indefinitely after being arrested on suspicions of a DWI. He's decided to withdraw from school, and he will enter an inpatient facility hoping for help with his struggles with substance abuse.
Well, thank you, Laura. And obviously, when you lose your starting quarterback, that's a major concern. I think a lot of people, after the, the loss to Iowa State, Paul Hall, done for the year, a lot of people might have written off this TCU team, but they still have some talent. Tell you what, I hope that young man gets his life together off the field, but he's going to have some trouble getting his job back on the field the way Trevon Boykin is playing. Dean behind the right side of that offensive line, including the freshman. Maybe on Collins, the right tackle, picks up three. Sam Hall on the stop. No hurry right now for TCU. They're very comfortable going in to the locker room at halftime, up seven points. They don't want to take any chances here and turn the ball over. And keep in mind, TCU will get it first in the second half. And this might be it for half number one. TCU content with a seven-point lead. Not many people saw a 21-point first half, one in which that high-flying Baylor offense able to tally just seven points. How about the TCU D? Aggressive, taking the ball away. Great job right here by Jason Verrett on an interception. How about Chris Hackett? Another interception, two interceptions in the first half. Pressure coming from all over Sam Carter coming from the outside. Now, how about Sam Carter coming from the inside? And then the forced fumble by Devontae Fields, recovered by Chris Hackett. TCU defense, a dominant first half. Let's check in with Laura McKeeman. Coach, Trevon Boykin having a very productive first half, using his legs and also getting that ball out of his hand quickly. What do you like about your quarterback in this hostile environment? Well, he did it last week. He just turned the ball over. This week, we haven't turned the ball over. That's the biggest thing. We're playing against a good offense, so we're getting some turnovers, overs, but we got to get the ball in the end zone. When you're playing on the road, you got to take games, so uh, we got to go do that. Three turnovers for your defense, playing very aggressively. How do you continue to put that pressure on Florence? Well, you know, we're, we're, miss, we're messing with our coverages and getting to we'll play over the top. Can't let Terrence Williams beat you, so we're trying not let him do that. All right, thank you, Coach. Let's go to break. Halftime in Waco with a score 14-7, TCU over Baylor. When we come back, you'll have our Los Angeles studio for Fox College Football Halftime with Kevin Frazier and Marcus Allen. Gino. Fox College Football is presented by Frost Brewed Coors Light, the game's most refreshing beer. By Mazda, we believe if it's not worth driving, it's not worth building. And by Whataburger, proud to serve it hot and fresh 24 hours a day. Defense, the name of the game in half number one here from Waco, Texas. 14 to seven, our halftime score. TCU on top. Mike Morgan, J.C. Pearson, and J.C., we talked about it at the beginning of this broadcast, second career start for Trevon Boykin. What would that extra preparation mean for him? He played a nearly flawless first half. Oh, he was phenomenal in the first half, just making great decisions and quick decisions, like here on third and long. Quick decision just to pull the ball down and run, convert this third and long into a first down, and then throw in the football. He's done a great job here to Cam White for a touchdown. Quick decisions to throw to Josh Boyce. He's been the guy to work underneath and convert first downs. And then again, going down the field to Cam White for another touchdown. The only two touchdowns of the game, but Trevon Boykin having a great first half. And our halftime stats presented by the principal financial group. Not a whole lot of total yards. That's exactly what TCU wants. I'll tell you what else the Horned Frogs want. Three turnovers. They got them. Turnover battle being won by TCU, as well as time of possession. Pretty much it's everything that you would draw up if you're Gary Patterson to slow down that incredibly potent attack for the Baylor Bears. And TCU will get it first in half number two. Trevon Boykin leading the team in passing and rushing in half number one, and not a single turnover. That's the key. Just got to continue to play within himself. He's done a great job in the first half, but you got to be consistent. Dawson and Boyce back to receive. And another knee taken 
by Dawson. First and 10 from the 25 for TCU as we check in with Laura. Thanks, Mike. And Coach Bryles told me that Baylor needs to settle down and play. That was his biggest message to his team at the half. He said, let's get something going offensively and get some stops here and there. He also wants to limit those turnovers, of course. And Mike and JC, remember he told us about that reassuring confidence he has in Nick Florence? I'm sure that's something we'll see him really capitalize on in the second half. He's going to have to because you can see he looks a little nervous there. So hopefully he talked to Nick. He said normally when he gets nervous, he goes and talks to Nick Florence, and Nick Florence calms him down. Illegal substitution on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. So an inauspicious start to half number two for the Horn Frogs. The first play draws a penalty flag. Again, penalties have been an issue all year long for Gary Patterson's TCU Horn Frogs. Turnovers were an issue going in, but instead, the Horn Frogs forcing three and playing a near flawless first half. Battle on the loan back the freshman. They feed him. And he is lit up behind the line of scrimmage. A loss on the play. Sam Hall, number 25. Looks like Baylor has come out and said that they're going to stop this run game. They allow TCU to run the ball on them convert third downs and go all the way down the field. They've got to take something away from TCU and it looks like they want to try to take away the run game here early. You can see all the green jerseys at the line of scrimmage. Excuse me, that's a, at the line of scrimmage to try to take away the run. On second and 12, Boykin becomes a runner. Boykin still on his feet and finally wrapped up at the 31 yard line, another tackle for Sam Hall, but not before an eight yard scamper for Boykin. We talked about Boykin with that added dimension of his legs. When things break down in the passing game, he can pull the ball down and turn a negative into a positive. That time it looked like he was going to get sacked or it was going to be an incompletion, and he gains positive yards. TCU has been very efficient tonight on third down, six out of ten. Boykin unloads and completes it to his favorite target, Josh Boyce. Boyce has been the guy who has moved the sticks on third down. Cam White has been the guy in the end zone. And again, the problem with Baylor's coverage is that they're too soft right now. And they're not disrupting the timing, and there's no rush to get to Boykin. So it's just an easy timing throw for Boykin and these receivers on these short slants and curls and you're not disrupting the time. Quick drop for Boykin. Completes it, 45, past midfield and into plus territory for Cam White. And it's the same thing, Joe Williams, the corner. Look at the coverage and look at the cushion off and inside and then he backpedals and turns at the snap. And so Cam White just comes up three, four yards, turns around, and it's an easy throw for the young quarterback. Those cornerbacks have got to get up there and disrupt the timing, or they're just going to get nickel and dime all the way down the field. Dean on first down. Keeps the legs churning before being stacked up. And after a modest game, Terrence Lloyd, one of the men to meet him. TCU tonight. A punt, touchdown, punt, a critical fourth down, which they were unable to convert, but then they bounce back and another touchdown near the end of the first half. Again, nobody thought TCU was going to win a game here in Waco in shootout style. They didn't want to have one of those 40, 50 type point games. This is the kind of game that they need to have. Again, that jet sweep to Dawson, and again, positive yardage and a first down. The 5'9 senior scoots for eight. That's about the third or fourth time we've seen Sky Dawson come on that jet sweep. And I'm saying you better watch for Trevon Boykin keeping the ball the next time because it looks like the middle of the field is coming wide open. Everybody is flowing quickly with Sky Dawson. Don't be surprised to see Boykin keep it the next time. 
Matthew Tucker back in the game for the Horn Frogs. They fake it to him. Boykin goes down. This time unable to avoid Ahmad Dixon, one of the top linebackers in the Big 12. Loss of nine. Ahmad Dixon with speed. He's just going to come off the edge and watch how quickly he beats the tackle, Collins. Collins has no chance as the tackle. Not really, he's a little confused. Not really sure who he's supposed to take. Takes a step down inside, and when you take that false step on a speed guy like Dixon, you're dead. Now second down and 19. They set up the screen and the pass a little bit off the mark for Matthew Tucker. We talked about the TCU keys to the game at the top, J.C. So far, so good. Everything going well for them. Take care of the ball. No turnovers, and they've gotten three turnovers. And then limit the passing game. I mean, look at that. 74 yards on the one touchdown pass, the second play of the game. Since then, only 65 yards allowed and two interceptions. So right now, TCU and those keys working to perfection. TCU 7 for 11 on third down. Home run ball down the sideline. Caught. Touchdown. Darius Brown. <laughs> Trevon Boykin continues to be on the money. Short, intermediate, and long. And third and long. This is just called just taking a shot. Take a shot down the field, and you never know what can happen. They come up with the huge touchdown. Crowd in Waco is stunned. Just the second career start for the redshirt freshman, and this time he finds another freshman, Ladarius Brown, 21 to seven, our score. And Trevon Boykin has dialed up tonight has looked pretty good. Three touchdown passes, including the deep ball here to Ladarius Brown. But he's had some help. I want you to watch the cornerback, Tyler Stevenson. He knows it's third and long. He gets out. He opens his hip. He runs, and then he starts to cruise. And then he misplays the ball in the air terribly and allows Ladarius Brown to run right by him. And then they throw the ball over the top of him just you can draw it up all you want, but guys have to make plays on the field, and Tyler Stevenson didn't do a good job. The jack-in-the-box scoring drive for TCU. Nine plays, 75 yards, 4-12 off the clock. And now Baylor, as explosive as that offense is, going to have to play catch up here as Goodley takes a fair catch. Kneels down in the end zone for the touchback. Certainly we know Baylor's offense capable of putting a lot of points on the board in a hurry, but Nick Lawrence is going to have to start picking it up. A rough first half, two interceptions. Baylor with three turnovers overall in half number one. And way too early to, to press, but they've got to have some urgency, and they just can't be as patient as they were in the first half with the run. They're going to still have to be balanced, but now they're going to have to rely on Nick Florence to start making some plays. Keeps it and lost a yard. Devontae Fields, who leads the Big 12 in tackles for loss, has a couple of them tonight. As you see what Baylor has done. Oh, it started off like gangbusters. Two plays, 75 yards. The deep ball to Terrence Williams. Since then, interceptions, fumbles, punts. Pump and go over the middle. He's got a man at the 40, and then he dropped it. Oh, goodness, it'll be incomplete. Salubi, out of the backfield, could have run for a long time. And that's not definitely not on Nick Florence. They fake the run to Salubi, then fake the screen outside, and then just throw the ball to Salubi over the middle, and he's wide open. But look at his head. He's looking straight at the safety, Elijah Olaboat, trying to, to wonder if he's going to get blown up or not, and he doesn't catch the football.
Every third down becomes critical in the second half when you're down two touchdowns. Florence has time, delivers a strike. Going to need some yards after catch, and Terrence Williams delivers. 12 yards and a first down, and the senior made that happen. Yes, he sure did. Big play. Terrence Williams catches that ball about three yards short of the first down, but he's so big and strong, makes a couple guys miss. On the ground, Glasgow Martin for nine yards before Hasley brings him down. As we look at our Academy Sports and Outdoors right stuff player for Baylor, Terrence Williams. That's what he's done so far tonight. Straight ahead running will move the chains for the Baylor Bears. The thing about Terrence Williams, we had a chance to talk to him yesterday after practice. He's such a, a shy, quiet, unassuming young man, but he is a terror on the football field. Sure is. Leads the nation. 167 yards receiving per game. Penalty flag drops. Got it. Open man caught. And inside the five is Reese, but wait a second. There's a flag all the way down near the line of scrimmage. If it stands, it's 48 yards. Upside, defense, number 40. Line up the neutral zone. Kelly's the climb. First down. That's on McFarland. Second time he's been guilty. How about Tevin Reese with that 4-3-40 speed limping off the field right now with, the, with an injury, but a huge play for Baylor offensively. That's what they needed. They haven't been able to make any big plays other than the second play of the game and the touchdown. That's what they're predicated on, big plays down the field. On first down, this is Flores. Touchdown! Bounces off the tackler and finds the end zone. said that they were going to have to start to rely on Nick Florence a little bit more. Made some big plays with his arms and then finishes off, finishes it off with his legs. Baylor has a response. An eight-play, 75-yard drive all set up. The big pass play, Nick Florence to Tevin Reese. And then Florence takes care of the rest. Don't go anywhere. Seven-point game from Waco. Sunday. Drive, but J.C., the <laughs> Bears caught a break. Yeah, sometimes you get away with one. Jared Salubi, watch him. He drops the ball right here, but watch the ball. Never touches the ground. Bounces off his backside and his right foot and Kenny Kane intercepts the football. But I think everyone was so surprised that Salubi dropped it because he was so wide open, no one kept track of the football. And that was that could be the play of the game because that would have given TCU the ball back up 21-7 in great field position, but instead it's not called an interception and Baylor's able to go down the field and score. Now it's 21-14, completely different ball game. The jack-in-the-box scoring drive for the Baylor Bears, capped off by the five-yard touchdown run from Nick Florence. Seven plays, 75 yards, just a minute 36 off the clock. That's the kind of Baylor drive we're accustomed to over the years under coach Art Riles. How about that play? No one caught it. I mean, everyone was so surprised, I think, by Salubi dropping the wide-open pass. TCU certainly didn't complain about it as Dawson takes it. But that track speed brings it out to the 26-yard line as we check in with Laura McKeeman. Mike, before Baylor's last scoring drive, Nick Florence pulled his offense together and said, look, we have to answer. He said, I'll take care of my business if you take care of yours. And he certainly did that. Now, after the touchdown, he came over to the sideline, looked at Coach Browles, and Coach Browles just said, yep, kept it very simple, Mike. <laughs> Sometimes simplicity is the best form of success. Nick Florence, that's another guy. When you talk to him, you feel like you're talking to an offensive coordinator. Sharp mind and pretty good arm to go with it. Nothing doing on first down and 10 for Catalan. Ahmad Dixon, the first man to meet him. 
At some point, J.C., the Baylor defense has got to make a play. And they just need a couple of stops, and I'm sure that's exactly what the offense feels like. We just need a couple of stops. Give us the possessions, and then they feel like they can score some points. But this defense, they've got to come up with, first of all, they've got to stop the run. Then they've got to do better in coverage, especially on the outside. Three penalty flags falling to the field turf here at Floyd Casey Ball Stadium. Field. Offense number 59, five-yard penalty, still second down. Babalusia, the left tackle, you see just that slow rock back. It's all it takes. It's all that penalty. But again, you talked about then Baylor having to come up with the stop. But again, outside, still giving up way too much cushion outside and making throws easy for Boykin when they want to make those quick throws. Boykin looking to throw and flushed out. Tucks it, runs, and picks up a few. Five yards will set up third down and long. As you see, TCU scored 20 points in 32 consecutive games. That's the longest active streak in the nation. You don't think of their offense as explosive, but combined with great defense, they score enough points to win a lot of games. Rose Bowl champions just two years ago. First year in the Big 12 Conference. Boykin rifles it in the flat. And a nice job by Carter to know where the marker is, dive for it, and get the first down. This is the second time we've seen TCU. I like what they have at wide receiver with Boyce, Carter, Brown and White. Well, they've got a lot of weapons on this offense. And then the way that Boykin is throwing the ball and the decisions that he's making, this offense is very tough, very efficient tonight. On first down. Yeah, that one sails high. Incomplete. Time now for a Mazda game break. Let's check in with Kevin Frazier. Unbeaten Ohio State on the road taking on Indiana now after going up by 10 the Buckeyes have surrendered 14 straight points Stephen Houston two TDs in what in the world's going on with those Hoosiers they lead by four I don't think anyone saw that one coming Kevin Man. what's going on in college football <laughs> this weekend huh a lot of crazy things happening that's what makes it so great on second down, another perfect strike from Boykin. This time he hits David Porter. 14 yards and a first down. Well, the problem is they've got the, their corners, Baylor does, playing inside and off. And so every inside move a receiver gives them, they've got to honor that. And now there's so much room to the outside that they can just throw the ball out there easily. Catalan. Rhines it out for a short game. What TCU's got to do, too, is just stay within themselves. We've seen Boykin throw a couple of balls over the middle, and they sailed on him. Just get back to what they were doing. Make it easy on them. Give them the easy throws. Stay away from the tough ones and the possible interceptions, and just continue to run their offense. They've done a great job this entire game of controlling the football. Talk about sharing the wealth. TCU has hit seven different receivers in this game. Boykin on the ground, runs into one of his receivers trying to pull off a block downfield. That was David Porter, but he'll take the glancing blow in exchange for the first down. Yeah, you got to do what you got to do to get a first down. Boykin felt like he had nowhere to go, so he just runs through his own guy, but give this guy credit out there trying to block for him. Warren Frogs giving Baylor a taste of its own medicine. The quick snap. And Catalan ahead for three. There you see Gary Patterson, school's all-time winningest coach. The 
a lot of people will be surprised to know TCU's made 13 bowl games in the last 14 years. Art Riles, what a job he has done with this Baylor program. He's used to reviving programs. Did a great job at Houston. Won two Conference USA championships with the Cougars before taking the job in Waco. On second down, not this time. A couple of green jerseys knifing in. A loss of two on the play. Dixon and Mason. Coming from opposite sides. Baylor just that time just got a little more aggressive defensively. I think they're going to have to start taking some chances, but you can't take too many chances because the pressure doesn't have time to get the Boykin in the pass game. So you're trying to rush and blitz and stop the run, not necessarily the pass. Another long drive for TCU. Tenth play coming up. Caught 30. And then some first down for Brandon Carter, the sophomore. Exactly what I'm talking about. So what do you do? If the rush doesn't have time to get to the quarterback, what do you do? You got to tighten up in the back end. You got to trust your guys to play bump and run. And remember, Baylor's a zone team, though. They don't play a lot of man-to-man -man coverage. So they're kind of in a quandary right now of what to do because they're playing soft zones, getting picked apart when they want to get aggressive. They're not good man-to-man -man cover guys. So their defense right now is in a quandary. Big hole left side, shifting his way is Catalan. Best run of the day for the freshman as he picks up 12. You know, go back to your point on zone versus man. Defensive coordinator Phil Bennett told us flat out, we just don't have enough personnel to play man to man. No. He said, uh, you know, their best athletes are on offense. So defensively, they can't just match up and play man to man coverage. So they play a lot of soft zone. They get, they're getting picked apart here tonight, and you can't bring pressure if you can't play man. Boykin with a penalty flag takes it to the nine. Another tackle. Holding offense, number 69. 10-yard penalty to be first down. That's on the freshman, Avion Collins. They think Avion Collins, 69, has had it. It's going to have a tremendous future with this program. See Avion Collins, number 69, right there, right tackle. See just right there. Just a wrestling move right there. Really no reason to do that because the ball is by him at that point. Just get your hands off and just fall on. Takes him out of the red zone. Not first down. Boykin. Complete at the 20. And down shortly thereafter. That's Cam White who's already got two touchdowns on the night. Seven yards there for White. Give offensive coordinator Jarrett Anderson some credit as well for TCU. He has put together one heck of a game plan tonight. Working with a quarterback making just his second career start. Slant. Breaks a tackle. And goes down, Sky Dawson, not a big guy, 5'9", about a buck 80, but hard to bring down there. And here they try to bring pressure and play man coverage, and they're playing too far off. So it's an easy, quick throw, even though Sky Dawson here tries to break a couple tackles, doesn't turn it into a big game, but there's no reason to bring pressure if you're going to play off in the secondary, because... Boykin is reading the pressure coming, just flips the ball outside, and it's an easy throw and catch. Again. On third and eight. Boykin completes it at the 10-5, leaping and falling at about the two-yard line is Cam White. And just like you talked about, J.C., dinking and dunking. Dinking and dunking. Pressure can't get to Boykin. He makes great quick decisions right here. Now they're just playing zone. They let everybody drop off, and then they just run Cam, right, Cam White down in front of them. So right now, TCU offensively is doing everything right. 
and they're running routes, whether it's man or zone, they're going to have a guy running wide open. TCU 11 of 15 on third down, left side, touchdown, Boyce. A two touchdown lead for the Horn Frogs who are clicking right now on offense. And Boyce is a wide receiver. They line him up in the backfield. And then they just hand it to him. And that now it's like a toss sweep with two lead backs blocking for you. Over Chrome on the extra point. TCU fans starting to celebrate a little bit here in Waco. How about Josh Boyce on the ground finds pay dirt. A minute 28 remaining in the third quarter. Josh Boyce cramped up a little bit after that touchdown, but he won't even feel the pain after another impressive scoring drive, the jack-in-the-box scoring drive for the Horned Frogs. Another long one, 15 plays, 74 yards. But look at the time, too. Seven minutes, 44 seconds off the clock. Goodly on the return. And tripped up inside the 25-yard line. Nick Florence and the Baylor offense will go back to work when we return 28 to 14, our score. The second consecutive loss to Baylor as we look at today's matchups and play some Surprising score, 63 to 21, Oklahoma. K-State gets it done, another dog fight with Iowa State. And how about the undefeated Fighting Irish? And with that victory for Oklahoma, things are awfully interesting right now in the Big 12. Kansas State lead of the way, undefeated, 3-0. West Virginia, Oklahoma, Texas Tech, all at 2-1. TCU trying to join the pack with a win tonight. First down. Florence down the sideline as a man midfield. No chance to catch Terrence Williams. 77 yards. Wow, TCU brings the pressure, and when you bring pressure, you have to play coverage on the outside. Watch the shot that Nick Florence takes here, but he knows that there's single coverage outside with Terrence Williams and a safety, Chris Hackett, which is a mismatch all day long. Surprised that TCU was so aggressive and allowed that to even happen. They've been playing coverage all day keeping the ball in front of him. A gamble defensively doesn't pay off here. Terrence Williams, who the coaching staff says, you know, he doesn't look fast on tape, but he can run by you, and he does right here. He sure can. And again, they bring the pressure, and they leave Terrence Williams outside with Chris Hackett. And, and what did... Gary Patterson say going in at halftime, you can't let Terrence Williams beat you. And watch outside, they're gonna bring pressure here. And when you bring pressure, now guys are singled up outside. Look at the slot guy. Terrence Williams is one-on-one -on -one with Chris Hackett. And that's a mismatch all day long. He's got room outside to work. The ball comes outside, and it's just a foot race. Terrence Williams, the latest in a great line of wide receivers under coach Art Riles. Think about David Geddes, Kendall Wright, a high pick who was actually at practice yesterday. He plays for the Titans. Before that in Houston, he coached the likes of Donnie Avery. He gets some awfully good wideouts who love to play in his system, and now it's just a seven-point game. 
Time for a Mazda game break. Let's check in with Kevin Frazier and Marcus Allen. Ohio State trailing Indiana, so they get a little help from their special teams, Marcus. For the offense is struggling, Kevin. You need special teams to make a big play, and they certainly did right there. Bradley Roby falls on the ball after Travis Howard lays out to block it. So Ohio State takes the lead. Meanwhile, it's halftime in Death Valley. As we check in on South Carolina and LSU, no shock that it's a low-scoring affair. South Carolina on top. Guys. Thank you so much, Kevin and Marcus. South Carolina, boy, they win that game after blowing out Georgia. Everybody might be buying in on them as a national championship contender as Boykin continues his accurate night, finding Sky Dawson and putting it right between the numbers. The Boyce, White, Carter, Dawson, Bush, Porter, Brown, everybody getting in on the act for TCU. Catalan, the freshman with a head of steam. Seven yards. Lackey on the stop. Like TCU's gonna be content here to let the quarter run out. They wanted to shorten the game. They've done it. This game has moved along. They've gotten 28 points. Offense doing the job. Can the defense come through the rest of the way? Should be an exciting quarter number four. 28 to 21 the score. You're watching Fox College Football. To you, leading Baylor 28-21. As you look at our Coors Light game summary, Trevon Boykin has been the story for the Horn Frogs. Second career start, three touchdowns, three touchdowns. He's been near flawless. Nick Florence, a couple of early interceptions. TCU dominating time of possession, but a big play early in the third quarter might have changed the complexion of this game. No, no doubt about it. Salubi here drops the ball, and it never hits the ground. Kenny Kane intercepts the ball, but they don't call it an interception. They call it an incomplete pass, and it was 21-7 at that point. TCU can complete control. Got on up the middle as it's now time for a Mazda game break as we check in with Kevin Frazier and Marcus Allen. Mike, you were just talking about that play, which was an interception by Kenny King. Well, Mike Pereira just weighed in, and he said, anybody see the play in the TCU-Baylor game at 10:25 of the third quarter? Pass was ruled incomplete. He can't believe it. It should have been an interception. And, and Kevin, that was, is going to be a huge play in this game, I think, because at that point, it was 21-7, TCU in complete control. Baylor maintained possession, and they go down and score a touchdown, get back right back in this game, 21-14, and now it's 28-21. Oh, we've got the A-team on our side. Not only Kevin Frazier, Marcus Allen watching, Mike Pereira chiming yeah, in. Yeah, Mike Pereira right with us. You see it bounces, bounces off of his right foot right there, and Kenny Kane catches the ball. And I'm, not, I'm surprised that Kenny Kane didn't make more of a fuss about it at all maybe he was unsure as well because again everyone was so surprised that Salubi dropped the ball because he was so wide open I didn't see anybody from TCU questioning the call which is amazing in retrospect thank you Mike Pereira the best in the business certainly appreciate all the work yes sir he does for us at Fox on third and inches Boykin burrows his way for a yard and that'll move the chains the time of possession right now is so lopsided before that last play, TCU has had the ball for over 32 minutes in this game to just 13 for Baylor. 
That's exactly what Gary Patterson wants. It is, but Baylor doesn't need the ball very long. You see how quickly they can strike and the big plays they can make. And TCU, they've done a great job of winning the time of possession battle, running the football, great decisions by Trevon Boykin. First down, jitterbutt move, now trying to bust it outside is Catalan. Hall oh, brings him down after an eight-yard gain. Good beat. We talked about the change of pace that Catalan brings to this rushing offense. Matthew Tucker, a bigger, stronger guy. Andre Dean, a bigger, stronger power guy. And then B.J. Catalan at 185 pounds is the speed and the quickness of the running game. At what point does that Baylor defense really start to fatigue? They've been out there a long time. Catalan races to the corner, tripped up at the 35 after a seven-yard pickup and a first down. Looks like he's a little injured there, but that right there, Mike, shows you that that defense might be slowing down just a little bit because Catalan was able to use his speed to get to the edge and around Chase Cat Casey, number nine right there, who was in pursuit but just not fast enough to get there, might be getting a little bit tired. First down carry, big hole right side to the 20 and down to the 14 yard line is Dean. Casey saved the touchdown, 21 yards. Yeah, and another sign of a defense getting tired, you start getting pushed around and the running game starts to dominate. And that's what we're seeing from TCU right now. Their offensive line dominating the line of scrimmage, the point of attack in the run game and allowing their running backs to get down the field. That's a sure sign that a defense is starting to fatigue. More ground game straight up the gut. And a touchdown saving tackle. Dean upended at the two. 11 yards before Sam Hall gets him low. Right now, they're just getting gashed. They are. And then TCU comes with the power that time. Great blocks at the point of attack. Kick out, block down, and another huge hole for Andre Dean. Full house backfield. Boyce breaks one and almost broke a second. Mason holds on for dear life. One yard pickup. Yeah, but if Boyce stays inside and follows his blockers, he's in, he's in the end zone. But again, Boyce is a wide receiver who they put in the backfield, so he's not really used to taking the, the ball from the quarterback and, and understanding where the holes are because he could have been in the end zone on that play. Same look on second and goal. To the up man, touchdown TCU, Sanders. <laughs> Offensive line for the Horn Frogs imposing its will on that Baylor D. Overcrone knocks it through. It's good. Another lengthy drive, 10 plays, 444 off the clock. Almost all the damage on the ground, and Sanders caps it off. Eleven twenty nine remaining here in Waco. Tomorrow, Foxtoberfest continues with a Fox NFL Sunday doubleheader, beginning with Tony Romo and the Cowboys heading to Baltimore to take on Ray Lewis and the Ravens. Our other regional action then 
In America's Game of the Week, the Giants square off against the 49ers, and the Vikings take on the Redskins. Coverage begins tomorrow with the Built Ford Tough Fox NFL Sunday pregame show. That's tomorrow at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. What a Giants 49ers game. Rematch. Yeah. A lot of people looking forward to that one. Eli Manning against that great 49ers defense. No chance to return that one as we check in with Laura. Mike, after Baylor was able to score another touchdown, Gary Patterson came over to his defense last time out and said, hey, that was my fault, guys. He took responsibility, and he's this type of coach that, as we've seen, is held accountable by his players, and he expects that respect from them as well. Also, the O-line, when they came off after that last successful touchdown drive, they said, hey, guys, we got 11 more minutes to play. They rallied around each other and said, look, we can do this. We certainly know they can score a lot of points in a hurry. Yeah, but TCU, they just have to play coverage, play over the top like they did in the first half. See Gary Patterson signaling into him, waving over his head. I'm sure that means stay over the top. Lawrence keeps it on first down. Easily with another tackle. And if you're TCU, that's okay. You'll let them do that. The clock is on your side. And the way that your offense is playing, when you get the ball back, you're going to run five, six more minutes off of it. So this is okay. They just don't want to give up anything easy, quick, and over the top. See those two safeties hanging back deep. Lawrence on second and long. Dangerous pass picked off near the 35. And knocked out of bounds. It's Kevin White, who's been picked on a little bit of late. But this time, he makes some pay. It's a long throw across the field for Nick Florence to make, for any quarterback to make. But when you're just eyeing the guy down, watch Kevin White out here. He's, his eyes are inside. They're playing zone coverage. His eyes are inside. So he's just going to read the quarterback, read the quarterback, jump the route, and come up with the interception. Tried to hit Lanier Sampson. Kevin White, just a sophomore out of Round Rock, Texas, was all over it. Boykin out of the gun. End zone. Incomplete. Brandon Carter on the route. Sam Hall was shadowing him. And a penalty flag. Personal foul, shot block, offense, 73 and 64. 15 yard penalty, repeat, first down. Our Academy Sports and Outdoors right stuff player for TCU. No surprise, Trevon Boykin. I guess so, huh? Look at those numbers. 246 yards passing, three touchdowns, and more importantly, no interceptions. That's what we talked about. They had to make sure that they eliminated the turnovers, and they've done that tonight. Been a near flawless effort for this TCU offense. First and long, Catalan. Jitterbugs his way to the 25. Morton on the tackle after a four-yard pickup. No secret, this TCU offense had some issues. And you know, one of the things the coaching, coaching staff told us from TCU about Boykin, and you know what, we're not going to lose anything in terms of raw ability. The big, strong kid, strong arm, and of course he can run. It's just a matter of picking everything up. The decision making. Right. Yeah, and then the command of the huddle. And he's done a great job of that all night long. Conservative play call here as Boykin fires through the line and picks up 10 yards. Well, less than 90 miles separate these two schools. It's the 108th meeting. They're even, Stephen, 50 wins apiece. Last year, Baylor shocked TCU, who came in here nationally ranked. TCU trying to return the favor. Boykin, end zone, touchdown, 
Josh Boyce. Stravon Boykin continues his incredible accuracy tonight. Uh, are you sure, Boykin, this is his first start on the road? Are you sure? I mean, this young man is standing in the pocket throwing the ball as confident as anybody. Look at him. Comes out quick. Josh Boyce to the outside. And again, they throw the ball outside. They have so much room to work. 9-11. To play in the fourth quarter. And on a Saturday night in Waco, Texas, a star is born. Number two, Travon Boykin. Have you? Nine eleven to play fourth quarter, 42-21. Travon Boykin and company. Leading the way, and as we send it down, Laura McKeeman's got an update on Boykin in comparison to one Andy Dalton. Yes, Andy Dalton, of course, legendary in TCU history when it comes to quarterbacks. And his first start on the road was a Texas game, where Texas won 34-13, to and he lost those first two road games. Not very impressive for Andy Dalton. Of course, he went on to have an excellent career. Now, we're seeing Teron Boykin in his first road start, 22 of 30 for 261 yards and four touchdowns. Mike, JC, I'm impressed. I know you guys are, too. <laughs> no question about it. I mean, he played well last week, other than those those three interceptions and two of them were his fault because he eyed down the receivers but other than that he threw the ball well last week Baylor will take it at the 25 this college football season Fox Sports is proud to partner with the prostate cancer foundation the world's largest supporter of prostate cancer research one in six American men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer in their lifetime to learn more visit pcf.org slash Fox Sports. Been a fun one here in Waco tonight. Baylor got it all started with a long touchdown pass from Florence to his go-to man Terrence Williams. Offensively, they've been hot and cold. TCU defensively has risen to the challenge. Pump fake. Now running, penalty flag, and Florence shoved out of bounds. Could be a hole on Baker. Tried to come back to that route to Salubi right down the middle, but Kenny Kane all over. Holding, offense number 75, 10-yard penalty, still first down. Well, not a whole lot of people would have expected total yards to be in the favor of TCU tonight, but look at that number, 460 to 361. And they've had plenty of balance as well. Nearly 200 on the ground, over 200 through the air. That's where Florence goes and completes it to Tevin Reese and J.C. Devin Reese he is so explosive, so dangerous. He's been rather quiet tonight. Yeah, hard to get him down the field. You know, he made the one big play earlier in the third quarter, but it's been tough because in order to get down the field, you have to have time to throw the ball, and this TCU front four has done a great job of getting pressure on Nick Florence, not giving him time. On second down, a tug of war. Who wins it? TCU does. Another turnover, Sam Carter, ready, got his hands on it, and tore it away. Just took it away from Stoner. This ball kind of floated a little bit at the end. You're going to see him right there in the slot, just single coverage. Now, Carter runs under him. The ball kind of floated a little bit late, and Carter was able to get back under it. They're playing two-man coverage with safety over the top, number six, Ola Bode, and Carter underneath and nowhere to throw the ball. Turnovers continue to haunt the Bears. TCU back on offense when we come back.
41. 42-21 our score here in the fourth quarter. Our Brown hand center, great hands of the game. How about the hands of Sam Carter? No, how about Jason Barrett first? And then how about Chris Hackett coming back with the second interception? And then Kevin White coming back with number three. And now Sam Carter gets his shot. A lot of great hands tonight on that TCU defense. Carter with an interception to go along with two sacks, a huge game for the sophomore. Four interceptions for TCU, four touchdown passes for Trevon Boykin, and more great rushing for TCU as Catalan scampers for 11. Time for a Mazda game break with Kevin Frazier. Mike, this is a good time for an LSU team that has struggled to score this season. Jeremy Hill, seven-yard touchdown run. Tigers on top right now over South Carolina. Back to you, Mike. Kevin, thanks so much. LSU doesn't lose two in a row very often, trying to rebound from that tough loss in the swamp to the Gators. On first down, more big holes for TCU. Baxter run through. Dean picking his way through tacklers. Picks up nine, maybe ten. They mark it short. It'll be second down and one. What a night Sam Carter's had, huh? couple sacks in the first half comes up with the big interception been all over the football field Dean will move the chains well, we talked about JC the, the nature of this rivalry how huge it's been I think a rivalry is always better when you get two teams in the same conference we finally have that now and TCU is a welcomed addition to the Big 12 oh no question about it these two teams are right down the highway from one another, so it was already heated, but now that they're in the same conference, it's gonna be even more of a rivalry, but TCU, they bring a lot to the Big 12. They're happy to be in the Big 12, and it's a big win and a plus for their university, but they're bringing a quality football team. This time it's Boykin. Makes one man miss. Stiff arms his way out of bounds. Broke out of the tackle of Sam Hall and picked up nine. Well, TCU had a great tradition. They won two national titles in the 30s. They had guys like Davey O'Brien, Sammy Ball at quarterback, and then hit a real rough patch in the 70s. Just some really bad seasons. And Gary Patterson coming here after Coach Franchoni worked under him as a defensive coordinator. Took him a while to get the job, and since then, has had a marvelous run. Second down, another gaping hole straight up the middle for Catalan. Seven yards as we welcome you here to Floyd Casey Stadium, TCU and Baylor in Waco, Texas, 42 to 21. Mike Morgan, J.C. Pearson, Laura McKeeman on the sidelines. TCU coming off a tough loss to Iowa State. And the Horn Frogs may be playing their best game of the entire season tonight. Boykin. Bootleg. Touchdown. Why not? Takes the lick and keeps on kicking. Takes the gives the lick. <laughs> <laughs> wow. AJ Morton, the defensive back. About Trevon Boykin. On the boot. Listen to this. That's the quarterback. And why not? He's thrown for four. At a rushing touchdown. Doesn't look like a freshman anymore. <laughs> Seventh touchdown of the night for TCU. And that man has accounted for five of them.
a built for tough truck event at your Ford dealer. And by Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit us at geico.com. Some beautiful sights, some artist renderings of what the new stadium for Baylor will look like in 2014. Set to open up for week number one, $250 million riverfront stadium right along the Brazos River. And you see from earlier today, that's right along I-35. You can't miss it. Going to be millions of cars that drive right by there every year and get a chance to see it. And one thing, one thing that Art Bryles told us, JC, he said, you know, if, if we're going to be a player in the Big 12, we need to have an on-campus football stadium, and we need it to be nice. They're getting both. Yeah, they sure are. I mean, that is beautiful. It's going to be as nice as they come. But you, he's right. In order to recruit, you got to have top-notch facilities these days. Time now for our Coors Light freeze cam, and we'll have plenty of good frozen shots of touchdown receptions to TCU receivers from one Trevon Boykin. He threw four of them tonight. He also ran for one, and there's maybe the best and most telling shot of all. Trevon Boykin signaling touchdown as TCU behind him has racked up seven of them. Just can't say enough about what Boykin has been able to do. Bryce Petty, the backup quarterback in the game now for the Bears. That's Lake Seastrunk. The Oregon transfer getting his first carry. Goes for 15. I still think Seastrunk can be a very pivotal part of this offense. He's an unbelievable athlete, but he's still learning. Yeah, you see the speed that he has right there. Fumble, and TCU picks it up. Devontae Fields, a true freshman who is making a lot of noise already. Yeah, but two guys that probably don't get a chance to work together very much in Petty and Seastrong, and they just mishandle the zone read. Then the ball's on the ground, and Devontae Fields comes up with it. Watch, watch the handoff here. Yeah, I mean, it's, it looks like it's a direct snap to Seastrong, the ball's supposed to go to the quarterback. Just Ivory Wade, number 78, the center, just a missed snap. And then the ball's on the ground, and Devontae Fields, the bigger, stronger guy, just comes out of the pile with it. Just a bad snap, though, by Ivory Wade. The fifth turno turnover of the night for the Baylor Bears. Not going to win a whole lot of games with that number. As Dean runs for four yards, and now... It's just a matter of running out the clock. Make it six turnovers now for Baylor. It's not just the turnovers, it's the fact that TCU has capitalized on those turnovers. They sure have. Devontae Fields there, three tackles. Forced a fumble, recovered a fumble. He's a true freshman. He made a huge impact on this TCU defense. He could have gone anywhere in the country. Gary Patterson said, you know, Mom won out on that one. Mom wanted him to stay close to home. He has. TCU's going to have a good one for years to come. Three more yards for Dean. Here you see number nine. He doesn't look like a freshman. 6'4", about 245 out of Arlington, Texas. Doesn't play like one either. Nope. <laughs> Third down. Boykin stops short. They're going for about a yard. Chadwick in on the tackle for Baylor. One of those situations you, you're too close to punt it. If you go for a field goal, some people might accuse you of running it up a little bit. So you might as well just go for it. Yeah, I mean, they're going to try to go for it here and see if they can get a first down and then essentially just run the rest of this clock out. They clock at two on the snap. 
And Dean is blasted behind the line. Brady Trahan, the first one to meet him. So Baylor takes over on downs, but the problem for the Bears, too little, too late, 3-11 to play, and a 49-21 deficit. Well, we mentioned earlier it was a crazy Saturday. It's not over yet. The Oklahoma score, hard to believe, but if you look at the AP Top 10, not a surprise that Alabama, well, it would be a surprise if the final score was 42 to 1, but not a surprise <laughs> that, I think that'd be the first time ever. Yeah, right. But not a surprise that they rolled over Missouri. Oregon is idle, and we already talked about that South Carolina LSU matchup, which is still going on at Baton Rouge. Pass complete. First grab for neither of the tight ends. Take a look at the rest of that Florida defeating Vanderbilt. Some people thought that might have been a trap game. The Gators are the Gamecocks next week the big one jc wow. I mean, that's the score 49 to 14. wow i mean that's the surprise texas tech took it to him geno smith we understand did not throw a pick in that game but obviously they kept him in check how about on that graphic missouri scored nine points in a hurry it's still lost though <laughs> <laughs> that was a quick nine points nice quick nine points but still only scored ten second down just a formality at this point as baylor with the backups in has gone by clay four for 12. better days ahead for the baylor bears still a talented team team that's coming off a 10-win season. Alamo Bowl champions, Nick Florence, very talented, very good quarterback, just was not his night. From the backside, another sack Guess for who? TCU. Would you believe the freshman again, Devontae Fields? Just a speed rush around the end, and for a guy like that that knows that Bay Baylor's gonna throw it every down, he just pins his ears back. Get, gets in that sprinter stance and just runs around Drango, the left tackle. Seastrunk. Picks up seven yards. As the clock ticks down, under two minutes to play. The remaining schedule for TCU doesn't get any easier. Texas Tech, who was so good today, Oklahoma State, West Virginia. Look at that final four-game stretch. The Big 12 for you right there. No, no weekends off. Every game is going to be a tough one. Now, when people evaluate conference strength, obviously the SEC has some great teams at the top. But one through nine, is there a league deeper in the country than the Big 12? I tell you, Big 12 is impressive. Again, when you look at those teams, look at that remaining schedule. How would you like to be Gary Patterson and looking at that? can't help but let's just take one at a time don't even look at the rest of it just one at a time petty picks up the first down joel hasley with the tackle we talked a lot about gary patterson tonight art briles though he has built a program here in waco they're excited about football again i think they're going to be good for a long time to come Kids love playing for him. Got a new stadium on the way. You see what Baylor has remaining at Texas. Texas is going to be angry after playing very poorly today against Oklahoma, Iowa State, Kansas, the Sooners, K-State. I mean, there's just no let up in the Big 12. Everyone may look at Kansas as, as a win, but they they played well against Oklahoma State today. Right. They played well against this TCU team mm -hmm. a few weeks ago. Gave them a scare. So, again, no off weeks in the Big 12. Could be the final play of the game. 
And it is. TCU. Gary Patterson pumped up about his team's performance here in Waco tonight. 49 to 21, your final score. And you're going to hear a lot more and see a lot more of that man, our what a bit, what a burger, what a player, player of the game. Ron Boykin, who else can it be? Starts out with a touchdown pass to Cam White, comes back with another one, and everything he did tonight was good. Look at the long ball down the field here to Ladarius Brown. I'll tell you, Trevon Boykin played a fantastic ball game, and this was his first start on the road, and watch this. Why not finish with one for himself running over the cornerback? Look at all the things that he was able to do tonight. Just flawless. I mean, that's all you can say. He was simply flawless tonight. And no doubt, the man that's happiest about that is standing by with our own Laura McKeon. Thanks, Mike. Coach, incredible performance from Trevon Boykin. 317 total yards, five touchdowns. What can you say about your freshman's performance? Well, it helps to practice four days, but, you know, we just got to keep getting better. Come on the road, beat Baylor. Baylor had two weeks to prepare as, uh, you know, as a side. I was proud of both sides of the football today. Your O-line dominated the line of scrimmage, allowed your run game to get going, and wore that Baylor defense down. How impressed were you with them, and what did you say to them during the game? Well, we, we told them, you know, what, what I told them the, before we went out for the game, I said, so look, I want you to feel as high after win tonight as you felt as low as you lost last week. And uh, we need to go take a ball game. We, went, we knew what happened last year, and, uh, you know, we, we wanted to get to where we were 5-1. and one. TCU known for its defense. Six turnovers tonight. Is this the type of defense that you want to see from your team? Well, I think in this league, you better get takeaways and make people kick field goals because uh, everybody can move the football. And coach, would you say this is the best this TCU team has played this year? I would have to say up to this point, this is the best ball game we've played so far. How do you continue to build on this? Well, we have to. You know, we got a good Texas Tech team coming into town next week. Uh, fastly improved on both sides of the football. And so uh, we got to get ready to play. We're trying to get bowl eligible, and that means we got to win one more. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, Laura. One game at a time, spoken like a true coach. And as much as we've talked about Trevon Boykin, obviously the TCU defense was outstanding tonight as well, and that just makes that conference race that much more interesting as the Horn Frogs join Texas Tech, Oklahoma, and West Virginia. Everybody looking up at Kansas State at 3-0. Yeah, and I, this is a long way to go before this Big 12 is settled. Every week it's going to be a tough week, and that's why this conference is so great. That'll do it from Floyd KC Stadium in Waco, Texas. Your final score, the TCU Horn Frogs victorious over the Baylor Bears, 49-21. to Be sure to join us on Thursday. For a special edition of Fox College Football as Houston takes on SMU at 8 p.m. Eastern. Then Saturday, Fox Sports Networks brings you doubleheader action as Rice meets Tulsa. And then Oklahoma battles Kansas. For J.C. Pearson and Warren McKeven, I'm Mike Morgan. Stick with us. Kevin Brazier and Marcus Allen will join.